Okay. Well, you're here for a uh, listening presentation class, and what what I'm going to do uh, basically for the next hour is take the um, take what I do when I walk into a house and walk you guys through it. Um, I've got some uh, some info up here uh, that I'll hand out that you guys can kind of pass down the road to kind of see what our typical uh, listing package looks like, and um, you guys uh, can uh, ask whatever questions you've got. Let, let's go ahead for the most part and just kind of let me walk through it. And then you can ask questions at the end. I think that'll probably be the best way to do it. Um, a few things before I get started. Um, when you, and there's, a, there's a, a breadth of experience in here. There are some new agents I see. There's some uh, agents that have been around for a while. So we're kind of all across the spectrum. But I think the big picture of um, thinking about a listing presentation is A, having a plan, and B, being able to execute it. All right? So, you know, if, if you've got the best presentation going and yet you cannot do what you say that you're going to do after the fact, what I do right now does not matter one bit. So, Along with the time that you spend in creating a system that allows you to show up at somebody's house to uh, win their confidence and begin to um, uh, begin the process of serving them, along with that, you at the same time have got to be putting together what it's going to look like after the fact. Because the worst thing for your business will be to show up and wow somebody on the front side and on the back side fail them or deliver less than quality service. So that, that's just an overarching uh, view, perspective that I want uh, you to have uh, as we walk through this. My phone, I just got a new phone yesterday and it is going crazy on me. Um, sorry about that. So, all right, so uh, when when, I'll back up to when I get a phone call from a prospective client. Sometimes it's a client that has come via a referral from uh, one of our, 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 our former clients. Sometimes it's a client that we've already dealt with. Sometimes it's a random that's coming from a sign call or from a, a you know, flyer. The, the, the longer that our business has gone on, um, you know, our, the base of our business has been referral and over the years you could probably look back and say 90 to 95 percent of our business has been referral business but as as we've done more business and our business grows just inevitably what happens is you know people do start calling on signs they do see the number of reviews that you have out on zillow and they do start calling so you're not you don't always know what you're dealing with when you walk in the front door um when, I, when i'm dealing with a referral most of the time i know what i'm dealing with and so i can play to the, uh, uh, the relationship that I've got. But the phone rings, pick up the call, and uh, hey, this is Will, how are you? On the other side, uh, hey, I'm getting ready to sell my house and would love the opportunity to have you guys come out and put, put a presentation together for us. And from there, I'll begin that conversation with, well, just tell me, tell me about what uh, is bringing you guys to move. And, you know, they may say, well, you know, we're, we're looking to buy locally or we've got a, a relocation move out of the area, whatever it is. And uh, I'll, you know, pry into that a little bit more. And uh, then my next step will be, hey, well, uh, I'd like to come out to your property 
and spend about an hour and a half with you walking through your property and getting to know you, you getting to know me, and ultimately being able to lay out for you what our marketing plan for the property is and then uh, how we're going to execute uh, all these uh, the, the things that I'm going to tell you about. Does that work for you? Yes, great. All right, well, um, I've got next Wednesday available at noon. I've got next uh, Thursday available at 9 a.m. Which time works for you? Well, uh, you know, 9 a.m. next Thursday works great. Super. I'll see you there. Uh, and just so you know, you don't have to do anything to prepare. Uh, don't clean your house for us, please. We're coming over just to see the, the, the property itself, get to know you. And when I say we, in this situation, it's going to be myself and uh, Lacey Langford, who's our listing coordinator. She's going to come along with, and uh, we're going to um, walk through the property with you, like I said before, and we're going to, you're going to walk a, a away uh, with uh, just some, some specific thoughts on what you can do to prepare your house for sale, and then ultimately what we'll do to sell your house. Uh, see you next Thursday. So um, from there... And, and let me let me just see what I'm about to say is going to apply to all of you, and some of it's going to apply to some of you. Um, for the all of you piece, you know, kind of what happens on the listing presentation, anybody can do that. Uh, some of when I talk about Lacey coming along with me, and what I'm about to tell you next, uh, Bonnie, what she does. Yeah, you know, this is like for a lot of you guys, it's down the the line when you've got a team put together, when you've got people that are working alongside you. And you can delegate things that are on your plate that don't need to be on your plate. Okay. So my uh, next step after I have that phone call is I turn to Bonnie, who's sitting three desks away from me, or uh, I'll I'll email her. Typically, what I'll do I'll, I will have have pulled a tax record already for that property. So when I call the the that seller, I know what's going on. Uh, with their property. I may have seen you know, what it sold for last. I'll know the neighborhood. Just be able to talk some, some very basics about the property and the area uh, to them uh, just so they can feel good about my knowledge of that area. And if I needed to spend some time studying on that, I will have done that before I got on the phone so I don't get caught uh, you know, just without anything to, to, uh, to have for them. So uh, I turned to Bonnie and said, Bonnie, hey, I've got a listing appointment on Thursday, 9 a.m., with uh, you know this couple, I've put it in the potential listing folder. The tax record is in the potential listing folder, and uh, she'll go in there. And from there, uh, I will provide her with the contact information I have, typically a phone number and an email. And uh, she'll take that phone number and email, and she'll put it in a listing agreement. And we do a full listing agreement. I've got four uh, packets here to just pass down the rows here. You can pass those back and then uh, let. So th this is a, a, a basic listing package that we use. Uh, we've got stacks of these that one of the gals on my team uh, just is preparing all the time, buyer and uh, seller packets that are just ready to go. So I can pull one off the shelf and walk out the door if I have to. My preference is that I will have what I'm about to tell you. So Bonnie takes that information I gave her. She goes into zip forms. She puts together the whole, uh, a full prepared listing agreement. Uh, she puts together a marketing plan that's specific to that property with an address along with um, the things that we're going to be doing. And as you guys can imagine, on the on the listing side of things, the 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 marketing plan that's going to vary uh, depending on the kind of property that it is. We've got a million dollar plus marketing plan that we use. We have a sub million dollar marketing plan. We have an Arlington and Falls Church City marketing plan versus some of the other areas. So, you know, what you're seeing there is is our basic, you know, it's a $750,000 townhouse in, you know, Vienna. Uh, that's what you're seeing in that packet there. So, uh, Bonnie takes that info. She puts it all together. She sticks this thing on my desk so that when I am ready to roll uh, that morning, I can just walk up to my desk, pick it up, and walk out the door. The only other thing that I need to do to prepare is spend about 20 minutes running through comps, okay? So I'm going to go into the MLS, and I'm going to uh, – hopefully it's a neighborhood where there's enough you know, com comparable data uh, where I can pull the last six months to a year. Typically, I'm, I have to go back a year uh, for comparables to, um, uh, to be able to, to, to give good data. Um, 
I'll pull anywhere from five to 10 comps that I feel like are good local comps. Along with that, I'm going to make sure that the surrounding five or six houses around there, that nothing, you know, that in the last, you know, three or four years that has sold, that I don't know that it sold. So it's, the worst thing, and it, it, this has happened plenty of times, which is why I've done this, is there's, you're sitting at, the, at, at their table and you're talking to them about the property and they go, hey, uh, you know, our neighbor two doors down just sold, you know, a little over a year ago for, you know, X. And, uh, few year back look right around the property and then a one year look back along with actives. So I pulled a tax record and the uh, an agent synopsis of the property for uh, both the actives and under contracts. That's one set. And then the, uh, the solds back uh, over a, a year, like I said. So uh, that's what I that's what I'm going to take with me. And in, in my packet, it just looks like this. All I do, I got my active and my under contract clipped in uh, inside the packet, go right in front, and that's the that's all that it takes to be ready to walk out the door uh, with uh, for that listing. So when I walk out the door, uh, you know, there's not a whole lot that that I have to think about other than those comps. Now. That's true because I spent a lot of time for years practicing and getting good at this, okay? Before I went on my first listing appointment, I put a plan together of what that appointment was going to look like based on the input. You know, most of you guys are uh, familiar with Brian Buffini, but he used to have a listing and buyer uh, tape that I listened to over and over again, heard it, made it my own, took it, and put it into... Uh, a, basically a script so that I had what I was going to be doing. So I didn't walk in there just flim flam going, Hey, you know, this is, this is me. Aren't you glad I'm here? You know? Uh, so that's really important. You've got to spend time thinking about what you want to say, how you want to say it and put that plan together in advance. Kind of goes back to what I, what I talked about at the very beginning. Okay. So uh, show up at the property. The only other thing I have other than my packet is a yellow pad of paper. And uh, walk in the front door. You know, Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Seller. How are you guys? So good to be here today. Thanks for uh, having Lacey and me over to the property. Really looking forward to uh, spending spend the next hour, hour and a half with you, getting to know you a little bit, getting to know your home, and uh, hopefully uh, letting you know about how we can serve you well. And inevitably, somebody says, well, you know, let's sit down and grab a drink. And, uh, and, and my response is, well, actually, what I'd love to do is take the first part of our time and walk through the property with you. I'd love to get your perspective on the house that you've got here to be able to identify the things that you guys have done from a work perspective, an improvement perspective, oh, you know, within the last five years. And specifically with your appliances and your HVAC and your, your, uh, your hot water heater, I'd love to know that when those were replaced last. And, uh, and some of your favorite things about the house that I might not just be able to pick out while I'm walking through. And on top of that, while we're walking through, Lacey is going to be taking measurements uh, for the, uh, of rooms, and she's going to be taking notes, and I'm going to be taking notes as well. And the things that I'm going to be looking for are any things that you guys might want to think about repairing or upgrading in order to get the property ready to go on the market. And you probably have a list in your mind already, and some of those things – they might match up with the things that we think, but we're going to give you our hit list of things. And if there are any things that we might not see off the top of our head because it's hidden behind you know, that couch over there or something, but you know it needs to be done, let me know when we walk in that room and we'll put you a full written report together that shows all the things that you guys need to do. Does that sound good? Great. So uh, inevitably, the guy starts, uh, you know, especially if he's an engineer, uh, he pulls out his notebook and he starts walking through the, the room and he's got his note. I said, Mr. Seller, you know what? Let's just walk together. Let me take the notes. Let Lacey take the notes. We're just going to talk as we go because I'd love to hear about the property and have you focused on helping me 
see what I need to see. Does that work for you? Yeah, that's great. Um, so during the during this next probably 30 minutes, the as we walk through the property, one of my goals in this time is to establish rapport with the folks. Okay, a like I, I'm I'm not a I'm not a gusher kind of guy. Like that's just not who I am. So I think my guess is some people you know, walk into any house that they see and they're like, oh, I love it. You know, this is great. And that's just not me. You know. Okay. But I'll walk in a house and say, man, I love what you guys have done in the living room over here. Man, that's a great. You know, that's a great use of the space. Oh, wow. Tell me about uh, the, the photo here. Like, where, were you guys on vacation during this photo? And inevitably, during the course of this time, you know, we're beginning to establish rapport, right? Like, people want to work with people that, you know, that like them, that like what they're about. And, you know, thankfully, we get to work with a lot of people that we just really like, which is a wonderful, fun thing. Um, but as I'm establishing rapport, you know, we may, you know, Make a connection that, oh, you know what? Oh, yeah, we lived outside Pittsburgh. Or, man, I love to ski. Or, I love going out to the to the lake and water skiing. You know, whatever it may be, uh, you know, just that, that point of contact that, that takes it from being an impersonal, like, hey, you know, like, I'm just the sales guy that's going to sell you a house or sell your house for you, to, hey, look, like, I care about you. And I want people to walk away, you know, when they, in our business, especially, that's a, that's a hallmark of our business, that we want people to know that we do care about them, that they're not just the next transaction. And making that connection, building that rapport is a big piece of letting people know that along the way. So that's one of the big goals. So I'm walking through, uh, I like to start either on the top floor or the bottom floor. All right. So They'll say, once I start in, I'll, I'll say, hey, uh, where would you guys like to go, upstairs or downstairs? And they'll say upstairs. So we'll walk upstairs. And um, I'm not always great about this, but it's helpful for us after the fact uh, for us to walk in a specific pattern, either clockwise or counterclockwise, if there's a, a real specific way. Because I'm taking notes, and when I, when I write, like it's like awful. It's really hard to, you know, uh, uh, to, to understand what I've written, um, but if I can look back and go, okay, that was the room that was here as we're walking through here, I'll always put a key in there like, this is the boys' bedroom, it's blue, you know, you know, end of the hall, master bedroom, you know, brown, whatever, just to bring me back. Um, if I was better about it these days, I would take pictures, but usually people are uncomfortable with you taking pictures, especially on a listing appointment. Um, that's been my experience. Most people don't want that. So uh, I'll, I'll just take good notes. So uh, we're walking through. Um, I see up in the, the bedroom ceiling. Um, hey, you know what? I, I noticed uh, a little stain up there on the bedroom ceiling. Uh, have you guys had a, any, a leak up there at all that you're aware of? Oh, wow. Huh. I, I never even noticed that, you know, uh, you know, which is and that, that, that's nine times out of 10. People just don't notice things. So we're going through uh, and I'm identifying, hey, you know what? This bathroom uh, is super functional. You guys have cared for it really well. Um, but today, in, in, in today's space, uh, buyers have been programmed by HGTV. And they have, uh, they, they have an idea in their mind of what a property ought to look like when they walk into it. And our experience on the listing side of things has been that the more we can provide the, the, the template or the... the um, uh, a reflection of what people are seeing out there in culture today on HGTV, whatever the, whatever other DIY kind of show. If we can provide that for people, they're going to say yes a lot more quickly and be willing to pay you a lot more money. So as we're going around here, I'm going to point out a few things like this bathroom and tell you that, you know what, if we just do a new floor in here and we change this vanity out, it's gonna it's gonna be a wow for that buyer. And guess what? Today's buyers, they don't know three things. They don't know who to call if they had to do work. They don't know how much it's gonna cost in their minds. It's it, you know putting that vanity in and and swapping that floor out is a seven thousand dollar job. And guess what? I can get this done for you for probably about fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars, just depending on what we put put in here for the vanity. So they don't know who to call to do work. They don't have um, uh, 
the, the experience to do the work, they don't have the money to get the work done in the first place. So they want to be able to finance whatever they can into the purchase price of your home. So if they have to pay another $5,000 in their mortgage, guess what it's going to cost them? It's going to cost them 25 bucks a month. And that's a real easy thing for me on the buy side when I'm out there saying, hey, guys, you can buy this house that has to be repaired and needs $50,000 worth of improvements, or you can pay another $200 a month and you can buy this house over here that's already got everything you know, upgraded. It's going to cost you know, $50,000 more, but, or you know, maybe it's only $30,000 more. But at the end of the day, you don't have to do the work. You don't have to find the contractors. And guess what? You get to move in and just say, ah, isn't this great? So I'm trying to sell my client, my potential client, on the fact that improvement is the name of the game right? I mean, you guys see that. Uh, even myself, I go through listings and I'm like, oh my gosh, that thing, that looks, that bill looks nice. I'd like to live in that place. And then you walk, you, you see a, a place that's not very nice and you go, wow, that, that just, it impacts you. You know, it absolutely impacts you. So uh, we'll put on our, and uh, in, in backing up, when, when I start talking about the list of things that we are going to put together for folks, I tell folks that we're going to provide them with a could-do list and a should-do list, all right? So it's two different lists, all right? The should-do list is, you know what? you got to do the carpet. you got to paint these bedrooms. You know, you've got to come in, and you've got to do some basic landscaping out front. You could go ahead and replace your appliances. You could do some tile in that bathroom. You could throw carpet throughout the whole house. Um, so we're very specific about the could and the should do, and that's helpful for people to process because um, you know they're, everybody's thinking dollar signs, and the reality is, at least in our local market, most uh, the buyers expect that they're going to have some work that's been done in a property, and sellers expect that they're going to have to put some money into it. So that's just a, a pretty uh, a normal understanding. So we've gone around the upstairs. Um, I've pointed out a few different things. I'm taking my notes. Lacey's measuring. Um, let me just speak a little bit right now about having a second person along when you get there. Remember, like, this is years in the making, guys. So don't, like, don't go, oh, man, I got to go find somebody to, to get out there on a listing appointment with me. But if you've got the resource to have somebody along, um, my experience has been, A, as a guy, it's very helpful to have a female. Like, whether I'm, I'm dealing with a man or a woman, it's just great to have somebody else there that, you know, that somebody can identify with, the wife can identify with, you know, I got whatever it, it may be. But uh, her ability to see the property in our, in our system, she is going to be the one that really uh, regularly deals with, you know, in the systems that we've got in place, deals with the, the, the details of getting our contractors in to get estimates done, to get work complete. And, and when I make promises to the seller, she's usually going to be the one that delivers on those promises, right? So it's really important that she's there along for the ride, okay? She's taking measurements. And so when we're putting our marketing materials together, you can see on the back side of our, our brochures that are in there, you know, every room's got measurements, some details about the room, and that's all the data that we're grabbing along the way so that we can uh, get back to the office and she begins to put that stuff together. But um, anyway, the rapport building thing is really helpful. Having two people to play uh, off of, that's been a, a huge leap. When we started doing that probably four years ago, that was a really helpful thing uh, in our business. So uh, we've, we've made it through the house. Um, I'll, oftentimes when I walk up to the house, I'll do a quick kind of side to side walk around. When I'm in the main level, I'll walk out the back door We'll talk about the deck and the yard, um, how things look, you know, things that they might want to do to improve. And 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 um, when I when I sit down with folks, I'll have the conversation about th where they ought to spend their money. And if they've got limited resources, I'm going to tell people to spend their money outside on the curb appeal and on paint. Right. I mean, those are the two things that are really going to make the most bang for the buck in terms of actual expenditure. So. If they need to, if they got a cut, they don't have much. Then anybody can paint. 
themselves. They can landscape them. So these are things that people can do themselves so they can really make a big impact on the way that the, the property presents itself to the marketplace when we go to, um, uh, to get out um, and, and get it listed. So next thing I know, hey, you know, can we go sit at the dining room table? Um, it would be great if we can just take a few minutes, tell you about who we are, and walk you through what we're going to be doing to get your house sold. Does that work for you? Yes, great. Okay, so um, we'll go sit at the dining room table, grab a glass of water, and uh, if this is somebody that's that's been referred to us that that knows about who we are, I'll take a minute there and uh, and and tell and, and just kind of go through into a, a dialogue about um, who we are in our business. Um, that we're a small team that operates, you know, uh, in the Northern Virginia and Metro DC area, um, helping uh, our friends and family buy and sell property. And uh, you know, our goal in the through this transaction. Is that uh, that we would so uh, serve you, serve you in such a way, serve you in in a, in a wow kind of way, so that for years to come, you're going to be coming back to us with your friends and family, saying, "Hey, you know what? You need to work with Will and the Gaskins team the next time you go to buy and sell property." And uh, no worries. Um, as we um, go through uh, this this time, um, we're also going to be asking you to put us, you know during the transaction in front of your friends and family, not just down the line. And in return, we're going to um, stay in touch with you over the years. We want to be a resource for you guys. We're going to be providing you with contractors and service people who can do a great job for you at reasonable prices, not just now, but through the years. We want our phone to ring because when you have a problem, we're the folks that you call. And uh, we will be that resource for you because we've got piles of great people that we work with on a weekly basis who know how to do great work and know how to take good care of people. So uh, along those lines, you know, if you don't, if you haven't started building deep relationships with contractors, you need to start yesterday, okay? Because the the work when you can have somebody's work put a good housekeeping seal of approval on your word, it's pretty powerful, all right? So when I say to, to my clients, hey, you know what? Junie's going to go out and he's going to take care of your, um, your, your, uh, your tile floor and your bathroom, and Jose and his guys are going to take care of your paint, and they're going to treat you fairly, and they're going to do the work right, and they're going to show up when they say they're going to show up, and they're going to uh, do what they say they're going to do. Um, that builds trust as well. And you need to have people that you can send to your clients. So don't just get somebody's name, but find out about them. Like, what, what's your family all about? Like, who are you? You know, like, dig into who they are and make sure that it's a, 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 a relationship with reciprocity. You know, hey, uh, I, I've, got, I've got guys, contractors that have called me to sell their house when they're leaving the area because we've cared for them in such a way because they knew that we were going to be able to, that, 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 that we were going to send them business if they served you know, our folks well. So that's a, that's a huge piece. Um, so we sit down at the table and I pull out this personal marketing plan that's, uh, that's right here. And I say, you know, I'd like to just take a little bit of time and walk you through the marketing plan that we've got here. Um, you know, in this world that we live in, the internet drives everybody's attention, right? And so, so our goal is to present your property in such a way that anyone sitting in their living room, by the time they've clicked on four or five photos of your property in their living room, they're saying, I want to go be in that living room. And that's, that's our goal. So everything that we do is, is, uh, is, pu is pushing in that direction. So, you know, one of the things, and I forgot to mention that this, but the moment that um, that I turn to Bonnie and say, "Hey, Bonnie, I need you to put together uh, a listing package for me," she goes on GoDaddy and she buys a URL for that property right then. It costs us eight bucks, eight bucks. All right. So when I walk in that house and I sit down, I say, "You know what? We've already bought the URL uh, for the sign rider that's going to go out in front of your property when we put it on the market," and it's two, 2009 Wellfleet in this, in this particular case. Well, um, 
people, what do you think? Like, how do you think people respond to it? Like, they, they love that. I mean, people don't know it only costs eight bucks to do that, but it's a step that we've taken. The other thing is, if I'm going to put this address out there, I want to lock it down so the next listing agent that comes through doesn't, you know, doesn't buy that thing. And then I'm like, well, I can't put that property on the, you know, I, I can't do that one. Um, so uh, anyway, so that's that's where our the the photos of your property are going to be uh, going to be based there at 2009wellfleet.com. And uh, you know, you guys know this, but uh, you know, all the, the 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 properties that are on the market in this area are in the MLS. And I always want to just make it real clear that your property is going to be in the MLS too. All right, there's no secret sauce out there in terms of properties that are coming on the market, um, but every buyer. Every seller, they can find all the properties out there, right there in the multiple listing service. Um, you know, we're going to be presenting our uh, our, our uh, your property via uh, photos with virtual a uh, virtual tour by Home Visit. Home Visit is the leading local photographer uh, ph uh, photography company, and they do a phenomenal job of making your property sparkle. Um, when I'm at a higher end listing. Uh, we do a landing page that has uh, property um, schematics, uh, floor plans for the property, a video, uh, stills, and we have a landing page that's got the, the, the photo of the property on there, and it's, it's super sharp. Um, and uh, so I'll have my iPad with me anytime we got a million dollar plus property, and as I'm walking through this, I will, I'll actually show them photos, you know, the video, show them the floor plans of a property that's like theirs, that has been on the market, just so they can get a feel, the impression, it's pretty huge to have, you know, a great marketing package uh, put together. So um, then I'll, I'll walk through and say, you know, we, uh, we pay for featured listings in uh, Zillow and Trulia uh, and Realtor.com, and we do uh, a Facebook advertising campaign on the front side for your uh, for your listing, to, and it goes out in the in the geogra geographic area around your property. And again, our goal is to drive interest to your property. Our goal is to get feet in the door early on in the process. Um, you know, Zillow and Trulia, we we do a little bit of advertising on there. But the thing, and I've said this many times, and so I, I hate to be a broken record, but I will be. Um, I think one of the most valuable things for our business over the last probably three years has been that we've spent time, effort, and money to make sure that people review us online. Just this week, we've had two random phone calls come in from buyers, and when we we always ask, "How did you hear about us?" Well, they said, "You know, we found you online," and they're finding us because we've got 150 or 160 reviews online. It has been work. It's pulling teeth to get people to put reviews together. It is hard, but it has really, really paid off for us. We get we get calls on a. I was on a listing appointment last week that was just the same exact thing. I mean, we we get a number more and more as our business has grown. Like I said, and it's shifting and it's it, it's growing into other channels. Not that we planned on that or, or really want that, but you know what? You respond when people call you and. Um, and that's a that's a great way to get the it has been a great way to, to get us validated in the marketplace and to get people to say yes to us. Um, and then uh, obviously we're going to be on our own website there. So and then I'll, I'll uh, pull open the uh, this package. And while I was a little bit earlier when I was telling people about kind of who we are and the business that we that we run that we're uh, I, I kind of skipped over that that we're a referral business. And uh, as we Go through the process. You know, we're gonna be inviting you guys out to events that we do to just say thank you. Uh, so, you know, we put a, a movie night thing in there. We put our lake party thing in there. Whatever you, you want to do, it just says, you know, hey, like we're not. It's not just about you know what we get. We want to be givers, um, and that's a helpful, helpful thing as well. So I'll pull out um, our, our just listed property postcard. That's the next thing on the marketing plan. And and I'll say you know this this card's going to go out to about 300 local homes. Uh, it's going to go out to homes surrounding you, and then uh, any areas like if if we got a townhouse that's going on the market and it's near some condos, for instance, we might hammer you know into that condo or the apartment building right around there. We definitely always send it right directly to 
uh, folks that are right around you because you know there are people in your neighborhood that that they've wondered what your house is all about and they know friends that want to move into this school district and so uh, we want them we want to invite them to come through so that they tell their friends about the property and uh, you know our goal with this again is just to drive traffic through the front door that's what we're trying to do with everything that we do and so we've got the fact that we've got an open house the website, which we're trying to drive people to, and just some bullet points, very simple, the square footage, bedrooms, baths, lot size, uh, and the price on the back of this thing. And those things are going to go out on Thursday of the week that we go on the market so that people will have them in their mailbox on Friday or Saturday, and then come see uh, the agent that we have holding the house open on Sunday. So again, this is just part of the package. We're trying to drive traffic to the property. So agents are going to be our next uh, best uh, way to, to get the property sold. And again, going back to this, there's no secret sauce. We've got in the in the MLS, every agent, that's where they're going to get their information. And uh, agents are going to be the ones that predominantly are the ones that sell your house. Uh, that That's just normal in the marketplace. There's a lot of buyers out there that are represented by people who are looking actively for, for property for them. And that's where they're going to get the information. One of the things that we think is really important is that once people have come through the property, that we're going to be following up with them. Once a week, we do follow-up phone calls to make sure that we're priced right, the condition is okay, that the, just so that we can give you feedback about what the market is saying about your property. And I said, you know, our hope is that we're going to get an offer real early in the process, and we're not going to have to do much of that. But we're going to ask you, once people do come through the property, to send us a photo of the card that they've left behind when they come to visit the property so that we can have that in our records and we can make phone calls to check in to see what they thought specifically about the property. And then also, if they have come through and we have an offer coming in, we want to be able to let them know. So at the end of each day, what you're going to do for us is you're just going to shoot us a quick photo of each of the cards that's sitting at the property, and you're going to send them over to us so we can follow up with people. So once people get in the door, whether it's with an agent or at an open house, uh, they're going to have the opportunity to pick up this brochure. And all the things that we're talking about this morning, uh, while we're here at your property and the information that we're gathering, that's what's going to go on this brochure. Uh, the brochure is going to have a nice description of your property. Those bullet points that we talked about on the back of our, uh, our just listed card. And then all these things that Lacey and I are taking notes about, the measurements that we're taking, and all of these things. I don't know if you guys noticed on the back of this, if you guys turned it over to look at it. Everything that's been updated in the last five years is noted on here. Why do we do that? Because every buyer, they don't want to have to do the work. They want to know what's been done. Guess what? Who else wants to know what work's been done? Somebody help me. Who else wants to know what work's been done? The appraiser. Thank you. The appraiser wants to know what work has been done. So I just killed two birds with one stone, and I have a conversation with my seller at that time about why this stuff matters, why improvements matter. And we go down the road. Uh, you know what? I'll, I'll I'll get there in just a minute. Um, but this is really helpful. People, you know, especially our our clients and buyers love seeing this stuff. Like what's been done new, um, and then some photos about the property are here. We put together a contract specification sheet at every property. It's got disclosures that uh, that agents will need for, to write a contract, and it also tells agents specifically what we want in the contract. Who the seller is, you know, wh uh, when when you can go to closing, where to send the information, and all that stuff is put together in a packet of info that we'll leave uh, at the property uh, for you, Mr. Seller. And then you guys all, you, you know, this is going to happen, but you know, it's on here. We're going to have a yard sign in the pro on, in in front of your property, and that uh, URL sign is going to be hanging from it, so that uh, so that people know when they pull up, they can just type that URL in. And they can see right inside your, your property and uh, get the information that they need to call us if they need to. Um, we're going to be doing an open house program. And our open houses run from 2 to 4 on Sunday. We run them the first two weeks automatically. And then typically we run them every other week from there. And if, uh, if the property is under contract, obviously we're not going to be holding an open house. Uh, but typically 
on uh, on the first weekend that we're in the property, some somebody from our team is going to be holding it, and then we'll have folks that work in our broader office who hold uh, open houses for us uh, throughout the, the the time. And again, our goal is to get people's feet in the door so they can see the property. And I and I kind of walk through, um, I almost always these days walk through the fact that open houses. When I when I got into the business about 13 years ago, open houses it was like Everybody was like, it's all, it's all about the, buy, the, the agent at the open house being able to pick up clients, okay? Like that was, you held open houses to pick up clients. And, and that still is true in many ways. But as, as, inter, as information has been you know, uh, sent out into the public sphere, every buyer has all the info that they want. They want to be able to see the property. So I tell my clients, you know, a lot of times we will sell a property because of the open house, not because our agent sold it at the open house, the agent that was sitting there, but because we did a great job marketing the property. Somebody saw it online or whatever. They said, wow, I do want to set foot in that house. They saw the open house was an open door. They didn't want to bother their agent or they hadn't even hired an agent yet. I can't tell you the number of times that that happens these days. And so they go through the property, they walk out the front door, they pick up the phone, they call their agent, they say, hey, I was just through a property that I want to buy. Come see me later this afternoon at the property. And that happens all the time. So I tell people that because sometimes people are like, well, I don't want to hold an open house. And I say, look, this is, this is one of your best opportunities to have a front door to the world. And we do a great job driving traffic to, to, uh, to our open houses, especially in those first two weeks with the advertising uh, that we that we do. Um, okay, and from there, um, we go on to just the listing preparation side of things. So you know, on the listing preparation side of things, we are going to have our stager come through, and she's going to put a hit list of things together for you uh, in terms of what you need to be thinking about taking off the shelves or putting away or moving furniture, that sort of thing. We're going to uh, get that uh, put together in writing for you so you know some steps to follow so you've got a real clear path to get from A to Z. Uh, and then after that, uh, before we go on the market, we're going to have our cleaners come through on our dime. Both these things, the stager, the, the, the cleaning, they're on our dime because we know that you're stressed out getting stuff put away. You don't want to have to think about going through the process of cleaning after you're just exhausted. So we got our cleaners, and they're going to come through. They know exactly what we want to do. They do a phenomenal job, and you're going to get an email from Lacey spe uh, specifying exactly what needs to happen during that uh, during that time frame. And then the contractor connection. You know, we want to be your resource. I told you about it before that uh, we're going to be there helping you connect with contractors after you have have sold this house and moved into your next one. But right now, we've got great people that can do the work on this list that we're going to give you, um, and they will uh, they'll deliver. And we can, we'll help coordinate all of that work for you. And that's a big part of Lacey's job is coordinating those contractors to come in to, uh, to do the work that, uh, that we suggest. So uh, right behind in, in our packet, right behind that, um, we've got a few things. Um, but we've got next, we've got three different uh, cheat sheets. I call these our cheat sheets for selling a property. And, in, you know, nine times out of ten, Seller hadn't sold a house in 10 years or so. Or they've never sold one before. So I quickly run through. Uh, along the way, you're going to receive via email from Bonnie uh, these sheets of paper at particular markers in time. And you don't need to remember everything on here right now, but I'm just going to run through some things that are going to happen. If you're in a homeowners association, we're going to be ordering your homeowners association documents for you. We need to have those in hand so that we can give those to a buyer the moment they give us a contract so people can't have an out in the contract. We're going to take care of that for you. You're going to get charged at closing uh, the, the cost, which is typically going to be between two and $300. Um, keys, we're going to grab a key from you. We're going to make copies. We're going to have two lockboxes on your property, one that's a combination lockbox and one that's a central lockbox. One's for agents and one's for our contractors or any inspectors that need to get through the property. We're going to notify you before somebody comes through your property. You're not going to just have people walking through your house at random times. The people that we give the combination to, the people that we trust, are people that we've known. You're going to, you, you can rely on the fact that you're going to be in, 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 uh, in good hands there. Staging, what happens in the, uh, when our stager comes through? And oftentimes, um, we will do a very light staging 
again, at our cost, we've determined over time that you know a vacant property does not benefit us and doesn't benefit a seller. And if I can spend a few hundred bucks to do a really light staging of a property, that allows me to push my commission rate and keep my commission rate high. And you know the cost is not great, and I get a higher price sale. I get a really happy client. They didn't have to do anything, and it's a wonderful win-win uh, for everybody. What's that? Uh, let's go back. Write, write that down and ask me, ask me uh, afterward. Cleaning. Uh, we bring our cleaner through, and um, uh, they're going to come Monday or Tuesday before we do photos. They're going to be about three hours in the property. Um, photos, they take place typically on a Tuesday at 2 p.m. Uh, pricing your house, we typically don't price the house until we're a week out from going on the market. You know, here we are in January. We're talking about a March listing. We want to see what's going on in the, pro in the marketplace. Um, in the listing agreement uh, that uh, I might have, I probably won't have time to go over that um, with you guys, but in the listing agreement, we leave two things blank in there. They say TBD via amendment. We leave the date that the property goes on the market and the price, okay? So that is really easy the week before we go on the market. We know we're going on the market next week and we've got to figure out the price. So in a listing amendment, we put that together, they sign it, and we're good to go, okay? So we don't, need to, we don't need to really get into the weeds of pricing in this conversation. We'll have some big picture price conversations, but not into the weeds, which can really, you know, it becomes a, 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 can become a, a, a tug of war. Um, marketing materials. We'll take all the information that we've got uh, from this, this time. We'll put that into a Word document. That Word document uh, we'll send out to you to make sure that everything's correct in there so that when on Wednesday before we go on the market, the week that we go on the market, right after we got photos, our template's already built out. We can just throw uh, photos into that thing, and we can get it to the printer on Wednesday night, and we'll have them for you on Thursday. So that's a real easy thing. Um, uh, people love to see kind of what's going in this stuff, but we just we try to put that well in advance, put that stuff together. Yard signs, they go in within 72 hours prior to, uh, you know, going on the market unless we got a coming soon coming. And then we uh, talk a little bit about showings, if they're going to be home, they got a dog, whatever, you know. That kind of thing. Uh, then now that your house is on the market is the next form. And uh, this just is some cheater, cheat uh, uh, thoughts about keeping lighting on, not being at home, not having, you know, uh, trash around, not having uh, pets around. Keeping your valuables, and I always go over this. I, you know, thankfully we've never had anything taken out of one of our properties, but I always go over this. I say, hey, look, you know, we've never had anything taken out of one of our properties, and I don't want there to be a first time. So anytime you've got valuables, we please ask you that you put them away in a safe place. Make sure that uh, nobody can can find those, and that goes for medications as well. And then finally, now that your home is under contract, man, we're going to be hitting the ground running. We got the we got 30 days to closing. We got a bunch of things that we got to accomplish. And here are the things. That settlement's going to occur 30 to 45 days from now. Inspections. Uh, we're going to typically have a home inspection and a radon inspection. Uh, that's pretty normal to have those two things. We're going to have an appraisal. Uh, purchasers might want to come back uh, to see the property as well at some point during the, the process. We'll let you know about that. Movers, uh, movers, uh, we've got some great folks to, to refer you to. And uh, then uh, go over a few other things. And then I, I stop there at that point. I say, you know, the, the two hurdles that we have to get through once we've negotiated a price on your property are the fact that the buyer's doing a home inspection and they're going to find some things that they don't like about the property. It's inevitable. That's why home inspectors have a, have a job. You know, they've got to find things. So they're going to find things on the home inspection and there's going to be an appraisal. So I want you to hold real loosely to the price that we negotiate on the front side because there may be some adjustments. And on the, on the home inspection side of things, those adjustments, depending on the, the size of the house, the cost of the house, they might be you know, from 500 bucks to $2,000. So it's really going to depend on the condition and some of the things that we might not be able to see right now, but I want you to be prepared for that. So we got to get over that hurdle, and the buyer can walk out of the contract during that inspection period. So we want to have it as, as good as we can. We don't want to give them an opportunity to walk away if we can help it. On the appraisal side of things, just so you know, the price that the buyer thinks they ought to buy the house for and the price that you think you ought to sell the house for doesn't really matter. You know, At the end of the day, we've got to have a third-party, uh, ultimately employee of the bank, 
kind of, come through the property and validate the price that you as a seller and them as a buyer have said we agree upon. And in our market, as a market especially, and, and we've been seeing this, I don't know about you guys, but I've been seeing appraisal issues, right? As the market has climbed, you know, appraisers are, are afraid to stick their heads out. And so I make it really clear with folks, this is not a guaranteed sale. You do not know that we're going to get to move forward with this price that we've got on here until that third party has uh, said yes. And guess what? I'm going to show up at the property the day that that appraiser is here at the property. That's one of my big jobs is to show up with a, a report that lays out the differences between this property and that property and that other property and says why we need to be able to give this property the value that we've got in the contract. So um, hold loosely to the price that we've got on the property. All right. Uh, and then the next thing I like to do is I pull out the calendar and I say, you know, we've given you a lot of details right here, but I just want to, I want you to know how this is going to happen, how all these pieces come together. You know, we, and typically I have, I have three months of calendar at this time of year. Sometimes I'll take four. If I know that somebody is planning to be out, you know, they're not going to be selling until June. We'll, we'll take you know, through, through uh, June or July, whatever it is. But I'll pull this thing out and I'll start writing on it. And I'll say, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, what is, uh, what is the, the, uh, what does the 16th of February look like for you guys to go on the market? They say, yeah, you know what, that, that's all right. That, that feels pretty good. Um, so, and actually the 15th of February, cause, cause I tell them we've got a, we've got a pretty specific process that we like to work through. It helps our vendors. It helps us. And it's going to help you because you're going to know exactly when everything's going to happen. But we typically put our properties on the market on a Thursday afternoon. And we're going to put OTM on the market in that blank on the 15th of February. So from the 15th of February, let me tell you what's going to happen. The first showings that can possibly occur are going to be on the morning of Friday the 16th. And you're saying to yourself, oh, good, we don't have to have our house ready until then. But guess what? That's not true because we've got to do a bunch of other things working up to that. On the 13th, we're going to have photos at 2 p.m. That morning, our cleaners are going to come through at 8, and they're going to get everything done. And the day before that, our stager is going to pop through and just put some last finishing touches on the things that we think need to happen to make this place really shine. The week before that, our carpet, uh, our carpet guys and our, our painters are going to be working, so contractors are going to be here that whole week before. And it's going to be a little bit of chaos. You just need to know. It's going to be crazy. And you're going to go, how are we going to do all this stuff? We're going to help you walk through this. And I can't, I can't take away the crazy. It is going to be. So I'll prepare you for that. But it's going to go uh, smoothly, and we're going, to, we're going to have a good result at the end of it. On, uh, on Wednesday, we're going to have our marketing materials put together because our photos will be back. And they're going to get ordered on Wednesday night. And then on Thursday, we're going to get out in the mail all of our mailers. And they're going to be inviting people to, to the open house on Sunday from 2 to 4. So on the 18th, we got our first open house, 2 to 4. And then on the 25th, we've got our next open house, second open house, 2 to 4. And what you can expect on those open houses is that once that open house is complete, that evening, either myself or the individual that held the open house is going to give you a call to give you a report to let you know what happened. How many people were through? What people have to say? Do we hear anything about offers that might be coming in? We want to keep you informed along the way so you guys are really clear about what's, uh, what's happening with your property because everybody's feeling nervous at that time. So hopefully we're going to get an offer within the first two weeks. And we get that contract. Here on the 28th of February, and they ask us for a 30-day close. So we're going to be closing on the 30th of March. So that gives us the first seven days. We're always going to be pushing for that home inspection. So they'll have until the 7th to get their home inspection done. And our preference is to push for 14 days on the appraisal so we know if something's not going to happen, that we'll know really fast, that if, it's, if the numbers aren't working for everybody. So... I don't want you guys packing anything 
until we're at least two weeks in, maybe three weeks, because we don't know that the deal is going to happen until that appraisal is done and that home inspection is totally off the table. Sound fair? They get it. So the next thing I do is I pull this listing agreement out, and you guys probably saw the listing agreement's totally filled out. Uh, you know, I, I tell folks, hey, this is a boilerplate contract, um, and, you know, what we typically like to do is actually have this signed via DocuSign. So nine times out of ten, unless somebody's like, they want to just sign it right there, um, I, don't, I don't sign it right there. It's probably stupid. I, probably, I know I've lost listings as a result of that, I'm sure. Um, but it's a heck of a lot easier for us to sign them in DocuSign. If somebody wants to, or if I feel like they're ready and like they just want to do it, then we'll go for it. We'll just go through it. But I'll walk people through it, tell them about, um, you know, typically we do a six-month listing agreement. One of the things that we do, and then I always point this out right away, is uh, you know we're, you're signing up for six months with us, but go back to page 11 on the listing agreement, and and uh, we call this our easy exit listing. The listing can be terminated any time, with seven days written notice to us. So you know what, we're putting our money where our mouth is. We're saying if we're not going to serve you well, if you are not satisfied with the service that you've been provided with, then you can walk away at any time. And I, I tell people, you know, there are not a lot of agents that are going to put that in writing for you. So, you know, make sure you check to see what people are having to say about that. Um, I'll walk them through the fact that we're not going to uh, set that list price yet. We'll get the conveyances from them and we'll mark them off here. I'll take, if, uh, typically again, I'll take a photo of those things, um, the pages that I mark up so that I can send them back to Bonnie when I get back to the office. Just shoot her a text with the five photos of the things that we changed. Um, and then, you know, I, I'm going through each paragraph just very quickly, um, getting the compensation, you know, and I, you know, nine times out of ten, I used to be so scared of having to talk about commission, man, when I, like, when I, when I first got started, you know, in, in real estate. And, and then I just realized, you know, A, most people are expecting, you know, they're, they're expecting to pay 6% or they're expecting to pay 5%. There aren't a lot of people that are going to argue with you. Um, and if there's an argument, for me, it's very easy. It's very easy. We've got a business that's, ba that that's built by referral. And we endeavor to treat everybody in a similar manner. And so I'm going to give you the same commission that I give them. You're going to talk to your buddy and he's going to be able to tell you you got the same thing that he got. And, you know, it's... For us, when we do a buy and a sell, if we're going to be representing the, the, the buyer, uh, these guys in a buy side deal, then we're going to do a 5% commission you know, on this, three and two. I don't go two and a half and two and a half. Plenty of people do, but uh, we do three and two. And then we'll take whatever's on the other side. You know, our, our overarching philosophy in what we do is it's not about this commission. It's not about this commission, right? It is about building a relationship that will allow us to... to to serve people well over time and have them put us back in front of their friends and family, right? If we do that well, they're going to do that gladly and regularly. And if that happens, the fact that I missed a percent of commission does not matter one bit, okay? So uh, we'll walk through blah, 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 each paragraph, and, you know, that's about it. So from there... Folks will ask a few questions sometimes, but typically typically people are like, I've got 15 questions that I want to ask you, and it's rare that anybody has any questions left after I've gone through everything. So, if, you know, they've got objections, and I've answered them by the, having a specific planned out method of attack to go after them with all of this stuff. I've answered their questions about marketing. I've asked, answered their questions about commission. I've answered their questions about how you know, finish the property needs to be blah, 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 all those things. And uh, then I let them know that here's what you can expect next. Uh, you're going to get an email from Bonnie later this afternoon or tomorrow morning, and Bonnie's going to have taken the edits that we made to the listing agreement. She's going to send the listing agreement back to you as a PDF so that you can review it, make sure everything's right. And then as soon as you give her the okay, she's going to send you this via DocuSign so you can sign this, uh, this listing agreement. And the next thing you're going to get is an email from, from Lacey, either tomorrow afternoon or the next day. And that 
Email is going to have uh, this list of, of repairs, the could do and should do list that we talk about. We call it things to think about prior to going on the market. She's going to send that list to you. It's going to outline every room in the house, and it's going to outline the things that we think ought to be done. And then she's going to let you know that if you need any contractors, just to let her know, and she'll provide them for you. And actually, she will help set up the appointments, and she can meet the contractors at the property if you'd like to help get those estimates so you guys have a real clear sense of what it's going to cost for you to do what you need to do to get your property sold. So um, that's that's it right there. So that's that's what we do. So, uh, you know, I'm happy to stick around for a little bit for questions. It's it's uh, two. Anybody needs to go, feel free. No harm, no foul. Uh, any questions that I can answer for any of you guys? Renee. Yep. No, I did not. It, it was uh, that's too overwhelming. Nope. Nope. What what's that? Oh, I would I would let them know that I would come back another time, you know, prior to going on the market. You know, typically we do it a week before we go on the market as we're getting our marketing materials ready, that sort of thing. Or if I was stopping by for some other thing, I just I'd make it, you know, another time. Yep. Yep. Rob. Uh, I don't often use it. I've used it on a few different occasions. I don't, I don't like it just because you can't show the property. You know, you, you're kind of locked in. I, I, I'm, our clients are rarely ready for photos and that sort of thing in advance. And I want to present the best package forward to the marketplace. So, uh, yeah, probably not. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. I do. Yeah. 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 Good. Good question. I mean, the what I what I try to do is is know that neighborhood, and I can only know it so well, right? But but here here's the thing. I had this conversation sit, sitting at a, uh, a dining room table on, on uh, Tuesday morning. Um, it's a gal that's selling a house over in Beverly Hills in Alexandria. And, you know, w what I can, can tell uh, sellers is that, you know, what, what they really need is somebody that can market their property effectively. And you need me as well to be able to give you a price that makes sense in the marketplace. And, and thankfully, there's enough data out there for me to be able to do that in just about any market, even if it's not my back door. So um, you know, I, 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 I will, all, all I can say is, you know, for that one, I probably spent an hour versus when I normally spend 15 minutes going through the history of comps, going through the specific street, you know, really trying to know, okay, when she talks about the house three doors down, what's the difference between the one that was two doors down that just sold, just so that, so that I've got... You know, conversational knowledge. I mean, that's all I'm really trying to do. But th at the end of the day, like this one, I don't know if I'm going to get it or not. I was pitched by, or, or it was between me and a neighborhood specialist in Beverly Hills, a great agent who I respect a lot, and she'll do a great job for him. But she was playing the neighborhood specialist part, and I and I was playing, you know, a volume of business that lets us understand the macro market in such a way that we can really respond. You know, and and folks that have a, his, uh, a a track record of marketing in such a way to get properties uh, under contract in a limited number of days and get things to close. You know, so I was playing up. You, you kind of have to decide based on what the situation is. You know, how you're going to play that. Yeah. Yep. Uh, the URL we always like our home visit site. Um, is always connected to that, so it's a real easy forward on uh, on GoDaddy. You, you know, go into GoDaddy and you stick in the the uh, the URL for the uh, the the photo uh, tour. There, it's it's super easy. And then for our splash screen that we put up, um, if we do a um, if we've got a million dollar plus property, that'll just be um, linked back to it. it's called Squarespace uh, that that hosts that particular thing. But uh, yeah, it's it's really easy to do. Yep. 
They do, but it's like they charge like 50 bucks and it's eight bucks to buy it yourself. Like I'm cheap and it costs like, and it, it's so darn easy to do. Like it just, it's like that. So. Okay. There you go. There's lots. Of, there, there's so many different ways to do all this stuff, Allison. Huh? You work with what you got. You know. Again, we're at the place in our business. There are times when I will front money for people. So it's probably not a smart thing to do, but um, I, I, we we do that. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh. Sorry, Well, so um, I didn't do a great job uh, because because I do go through comps with folks these these two packets that I talked to you about. Um, so we do walk through these. I'll pull them out, and that's you know uh, I'm I'm going to go through here and I'm going to circle different things lot size, square footage, and I talk especially on the appraisal side of things about how much square footage drives price, right? And uh, so our data is only as good as what's in the tax record. So we're going to use that, but we will, we'll have a specific conversation about price, but I, I usually stick to ranges, not specifics. Um, and, and, uh, but I will go through, I'll take first the sold to kind of get a history, what the competition is currently right now, and what I see as the uh, kind of a window of opportunity for them from a pricing perspective. Yeah. So it it depends. Um, when we're doing a um, just a lightweight stage, like what what I mean by lightweight stage, that's like stuff in the kitchen. It's like a few chairs and a dining room table. You know, not a dining room table, but a small table. Um, you know, a bunch of art on the walls blow up bed in the master bedroom, there will be no charge for that. If we have to rent furniture from Brooke, like I got one that I'm closing at the end of February, I was actually, before I came down here, just going through. Um, to t I got a 6% listing on a you know, $1.4 million property, right? It's a, a pretty nice little paycheck. So like I can take some of that money and put it back to them. So in that situation, I go 50-50 on a, on a furniture rental. We ended up having a, a Brook Furniture rental for about five months, and all told, it was about twelve thousand dollars. So they they're eating six bucks, six thousand. I'm eating six thousand. I got a forty-two thousand dollar commission coming in, right? You know, like I need, to, like there's got to be some give. If I if I gave up half a percent of commission or a full percent of commission, like way way more than six thousand bucks. Again, like I've just decided not to like hassle. Let me say, there have been times. It depends on who I'm dealing with, right? Like if I feel like I've got there's high trust there, and we've got the resources at the time that I feel like we can carry it. Like this one, I've carried that twelve thousand dollars since you know since uh, August of of this past year. So like, do I want to carry that? No. Is it? Is it beneficial for our business? I think it probably was, and not have to like haggle over. Hey, you're going to have to pay me two thousand dollars a month, or put this up front. You know, uh, there have been many times when when I've asked them to pay for it up front, and then we've credited it back to them at closing. Um, yeah. I, I have all those, like, I had five different estimates come across my desk this morning. No, like, in this case, like, well, because I have had five things come across my desk this morning, I know when I go out tomorrow, here's what things are costing right now, right? So I pay a lot of attention. It's that relationship that I build with contractors, right? So when I'm walking through... You know, and like I have more than just like a passing interest in this stuff, right? Like I do ha rehab for houses. You know, we do new construction. So like I love this stuff. Like I, I, you know, I like to know. And so when I do it, 
when I'm doing it, I'm pay, I just pay attention, you know, and, and so I've, I can be pretty spot on with, with, with the guys that I, that I work with because I know that when we're doing uh, refinishing hardwood floors is $8 a square foot. Or excuse me, it's three dollars a square foot. New new hardwood is eight dollars a square foot. You know, my guys at two two dollars and forty cents uh, uh, per square foot for the carpet that we use in most houses, right? Like, you know, my guy on average, my guy's gonna be four hundred to four hundred fifty per room when we're doing painting. You know, my my handyman is sixty five bucks an hour. You got to do five lights here. It's probably gonna take him about two hours. You know, on top of the cost of the light, you know, which we can go pick up. Uh, you know, right, right, like. It you know it just you get you get it and it starts rolling yeah 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 yeah, yeah and I, you know right right but but most of those there's not a whole lot that is gonna like stump you and if it stumps you just go yeah we'll uh, we'll have to get back to you on that we'll get we'll get you some numbers. Oh, it, it, I think it's totally comforting to people. I like, ap, you know, after, you know, I, I, I say that, you know, people are like, okay, fine. We don't need to talk about how long the listing agreement is. It doesn't matter. Right? So, yeah, you can end it any time. The, the objection is gone. I, I think we've had, you know, two, three, I, you know, two or three in the last few years. And, you know, I, I, there have been times when I've, you know, there was one I remember, like, we spent all this money on marketing stuff. We didn't even get to the market. And the gal was just, she was going through a divorce. It was just a weird deal. And we chalked it up to, oh, well, you know, next, got to move on. You know, I, I was pissed at the time. <laughs> Believe me. I was, you know, because it's not like, it's, it, we didn't even have a, a chance. Like, it, it's some level, like, if you give us a chance, you know, like, thank you. If you don't give me a chance, like, that's, that sucks. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's a great question. There are a lot of what, what I've, I've learned at some level is a lot of different people have lots of different impressions of things. And so, like, I got to be careful who I'm listening to. That, that's one piece of it. Um, we'll hear from our, our clients about somebody who did a great job for them. Like, that's a, that's a great one. And we'll regularly fold people. Some of the guys that we've got who are some of our best came to us because clients actually that's a that's a that's a ton of the people that we have working for us as I think about the guys that we go back to and go back to like the, my carpet and flooring guy like he came to my house working for another flooring guy and I, I was like this dude is sharp I like him but to uh, because I was honoring my flooring guy I didn't call him for years but when my flooring guy went south and he just took off on me I I had kept that guy's phone number and I called him back. I said, look, you know, I've got a great opportunity for you. You're going to get, you know, throughout the year, the opportunity to do probably 75 different houses just from my business alone. And I'll introduce you to other agents who are going to take care of you. If you do a great job, you treat people right, you treat them fairly on price, you're going to have more business than you can know what to do with. And he, he, he was just doing carpet install at the time. And he had, this is about three years ago for this guy. He had the opportunity to, uh, he, he had like wholesale capabilities, but he wasn't using them. And his business has just taken off. Like it, he's, he's struggled. It's been hard. He had to go from being a, a laborer, a guy that like installed to being a business owner. And it's a totally different deal. But anyway, uh, to m many of them have been our own clients saying we did a great job. And I have conversations with these guys. I tell them what I just said. I said, hey, look, you know what? Over the years, you're going to be able to build a great business. Like our plumber, like the number of times that I hear from my clients, like that my plumber has been to their house and you're like, they, when they get calls from our clients and I always have them tell the contractor that they are our client so that they know so that because I have the conversation, hey, you're going to have opportunities that are going to come your way. 
from our people. When you do a great job, and the moment you're not doing a great job, and this is what happened with my with my flooring guy. I've been working with him for years, and I was like, you know, he he started you know mouthing off to some of my clients. And I was like, we're done. You know, this you're, you got one chance, and then we're done. And so uh, anyway, that that's that's how it happened. Does that does that make sense? Yeah. You know, um, so when I don't always that 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 piece, I'll, I'll usually have a conversation in there, but it's not as formal. T- typically, when somebody's doing a buy sell, like that came to us and it came to us from such a strong referral, or like they're they're telling us right there, we're going to buy and sell with you guys. You know, like, and so there's not much of, as much of a, um, I've got to really sell them here. So then it's a casual conversation in, you know, maybe on the tail end or the front end of this other conversation, because they've told me up front, I knew that they're going to be buying and selling. And so it's a, it's a, it's a mix of those two, but most of it's going to be, what are your wants and needs in this trend, in, in this process? And then it's going to be talking about how all that's going to play out. So um, I, I don't, I don't focus much on the buy side there because really, you know, we'll, we'll talk about how to slot things, right? So we'll talk about the, the, the process that we're going to need to go through in order to, to make the, the transition happen properly so that um, they can, you know, meet, uh, yeah, all their deadlines and obligations that they've got. But I don't focus as much on that, Rob. And feel if you need to get up and go, feel free. Don't worry. Uh, it's basically a million dollars. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I probably ought to move it a little bit lower because um, it's a great feature. But yeah, it's typically right about there. No, we've got another guy, uh, a guy named Paul Russell, who's great, who does that. Um, Paul's with Story View uh, Video. Story view, yep. I, I think it's... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like if it's a true teardown, then I'm having the conversation. Hey, you know what? I work with a bunch of great builders, and I myself buy properties to, you know, to to build new or renovate. You know, let me have a conversation with you about that. But I think that's not the case most of the time. I, I think the market is going to nine times out of ten, the market is going to pay people more than a renovator or you know a builder is going to pay somebody. Okay, so they want to get it on the market, and even if that just means some basic, you know, uh, landscaping in front to to not scare the heck out of people, and you know, so, uh, some paint on the inside and a clean, a deep cleaning, like that's a few thousand bucks that goes a long way. Just just not having it be scary for people, right? I mean, people are afraid sometimes. You know, when you've been out with buyers and they're like, I don't really want to go in there. Well, it's going. Come on. You can see it. Yeah, you'll be okay. But it also depends. Like, that buyer that is afraid to go in that property probably isn't the buyer for that house. But, you know, when we're on the buy side, like the same cadre of contractors that we've got, they're available to those guys too. So we're telling people, hey, when we're walking through property, Julie is awesome. Like, she knows what stuff costs. She's walking through a property and she's going, hey, you know what? If you want to redo this kitchen, this cabinet's going to cost five thousand bucks, and the the uh, um, the appliances are going to be twenty five hundred, and this floor is going to cost you fifteen hundred. You know this bat, you know whatever. So people can go, oh my gosh, it's not the fifty thousand dollar kitchen that I thought you know it was going to really be, but it you're going to have to you know, figure out th- there there is a buyer out there for that house is 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 my point, and I think the market will pay you more than somebody else will. Mm-hmm. 
Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Most of the time, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in, in those kind of situations, especially at lower price points, it usually does not pay you back to do it. So you've got to figure out, does it pay you back to do it? And you know, from the cost, the time, the effort, a lot of times it won't. In a $300,000 know, condo in, in Arlington Village, probably doesn't make sense. Hopefully they already did it, you know, and uh, they'll, they'll, it'll be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Right. Yep. And the others. So, uh, well, let me let me just say this one thing. Uh, we've we've got all this stuff, um, you know, and some of you guys, you can feel free to take these packets with us or with you. You know, the thing that I ask, like we've spent years kind of putting this stuff together, putting processes and, and you know, and such together. And all we ask is that if you use it, Put your own thumbprint on it. You know, don't like, don't just kind of, you know, I exactly. Put your own thumbprint on it and use it well. Like, like, don't don't set yourself up for failure by not being able to follow through on the backside uh, with promises that you make on the front side. I think I started out with that. I'll finish with that. You know, know who you are, how you operate. And make sure that when you go to the market that you do the things you say that you're going to do. Do the things you say you're going to do. And if you do that, you're going to be able to grow your business. There's no chance that you're not. So that's it. Renee, sorry. And, and yeah, go ahead. Or do you want to just talk offline and let everybody else go? Right, great. Awesome. Thanks, guys.